how you develop better KPIs and what we can learn from one of the world's leading retailers. I've been doing some work with one of the world's leading retailers and for me some of the work we did with them really showcases how to develop better performance indicators, especially when it comes to measuring customers. One of their strategic objectives shifted. So they identified from their customer research that one of the biggest problems customers were having is that they didn't like the queuing time. So if you've been shopping, you've filled up your shopping trolley and your shopping cart, you then have to stand in line for a long time to wait to be uh, to pay. So this became a new goal on their strategy saying we want to we don't want customers to queue. So when they first introduced this they didn't really have any data so they needed to put new systems in place and what they did is they introduced um, a new system by which they asked their checkout supervisors every hour to fill out a form saying this is what the average queuing time is. And you can hopefully see how flawed this whole process is because these people are really busy so sometimes they just make up the numbers at the end of the day. The other challenge is that even if they try to diligently fill this in every, every hour, for them to figure out what the average queuing length is is quite difficult. And also doing this every hour they might miss the peaks and troughs in between these hours. The other problem was that it was pretty backwards looking. So it was telling, so this data needed to be collected, someone needed to put this into a system, then being reported. And I still feel that lots of companies operate performance management systems a bit like this, where you collect manual data that then someone has to put into a system which is then reported. So you get some interesting insights, but no real time insights. So it doesn't give you anything that you can act upon immediately. They then realized that this wasn't very good, so they improved this pretty rapidly. And what they did is they integrated this into the checkout script. So the person that sits at the, at the checkout, they then get a little note saying, next customer, another, another note comes up, how many, are, how many people are in the queue? So you basically look, one, two, three, and then you type in a number. And then the computer registers it. The beauty of this is now that you have moved from a retrospective system to a real-time system. So you can now open new tilts when the queues are building up. You get a much more accurate understanding of queuing times. The problem with this is that it is just making the job of the checkout person this little bit more boring, right? This is again something we quite often don't think about, the implications of collecting data on people's jobs. I see now people in teaching and in nursing and, and in the police and in other parts of, of, the, of, of our um, business world that people spend so much time collecting data and which actually takes, takes away time from doing their job. The other challenge with this retailer was that they also had another objective. They wanted to improve productivity and profitability. And actually multiplying these three seconds it takes the checkout person to do this by all the tills by all the shops suddenly becomes a very big number. So you think this is probably not the best way to do this either. So the next iteration moved to sensors. So they installed little sensors, a bit like a burglary alarm at home, that would sit above the tills and they would automatically detect bodies. So this was better. And now you have a real-time system that doesn't affect anyone, is pretty reliable, and the data is collected automatically and it's a lot cheaper. So this was a much better system, but it wasn't as accurate as they would like it to be because these systems track how many bodies are on a queue, but if you have a family of 10, for example, turning up with one little basket, it would register 10 people. If there's one person turning up with three big trolleys full of stuff, again, it would just register one person. So the latest evolution is, again, this is where big data and artificial intelligence can really help boost uh, the way companies measure performance. So what they're now doing is they're using camera systems. And they realize they have got cameras all across their stores. And these cameras in the past basically recorded a section of the store, the data was recorded on a little hard disk, and then simply be, oh, it would be overwritten every week or so. And the only time they would use some data if they thought they caught someone stealing something, they could use this as evidence. 
what they're now doing is they're linking up all of these cameras to the internet. So the data is now streamed to a cloud server. They're now using a technology that puts all of these images together and another piece of software that uses patent recognition to basically, this is able to, when you walk into a store, it then detects what you look like or what your pattern is, and then it can track you. So these cameras can now detect how many people are in a queue. And because these cameras are now intelligent, they can also see whether it's a basket you're carrying, whether there's a trolley, and how many items are in it. So it's much more the predictability, and it's much more valuable because you can now predict queuing times based on how many items people actually have that are queuing up. The other thing this is giving this retailer is that it gives them a complete footfall analysis, something only online retailers normally have. So on, in a website, you can track exactly where people are going. Now using this camera data, you can track the footfall patterns of how people walk through the store, even if they're walked in and end up not buying anything. So it gives you conversion ratios. And for me, this is a great example of data that was already there in the company, but was wasted is now used because we now have this technology to gain really interesting insights. And this is exactly what I do with clients. We work, I work with them to help them identify their real information needs, and then we find really powerful ways of collecting data to help them address those business needs. And for me, this retailer is a perfect example of this. If you would like to learn more, Head to my website at bernardmar.com where you can find tons of articles, white papers and videos that will give you a lot more insights into real-world case studies and examples.